Hi everyone, welcome to the sew along for the sweater. So this jumper pullover is a knit fabric so it has six mil seam allowances which is quarter of an inch. So when you're ready set your overlocker up with four threads of colour that match your fabric and we can get started. Now when we overlock we're just going to overlock on the raw edge of our fabric we're not going to cut anything off as we sew. You're going to be mainly sewing this on an overlocker today but you will need a access to a plain sewing machine just to stitch up the drawstring cord. Other than that the main part of this will be sewn on our overlocker. Of course if you don't have an overlocker you can use a stretch stitch on your home sewing machine and that will either be the lightning bolt stitch or a zigzag. Just consult your manual and we can get started. So when you're ready, take your front and back and place them right sides together and we're going to sew the shoulders. Now this garment is designed to be reversible. Um, it has the same neckline for the front and the back, but for the purpose of this video, I'll call the cutout part the back and the plain part the front. So place those shoulders right sides together and just overlock that seam. and then come straight over to the other shoulder seam and overlock that together. So next we're going to sew in the sleeve. Here is one of my sleeves, now they're identical, you've cut two the same on the fold. And when we open them up, you'll see in the middle there's a notch. Now that notch needs to match to the shoulder seam that we've just sewn. So making sure we have right sides together, place that into the armhole area. So it starts here. Now go ahead and repeat that on the other side. Now when you're sewing this seam here at the shoulder, the seam direction should face towards the back, which is the cut out. So now we're moving on to do the underarm and side seam. So all we're doing is folding this sleeve right sides together. So let's start overlocking at the wrist area. Now as we reach the underarm, those seams need to face towards the wrist. And just let that overlocking blade trim off the tails here. You may find it easier to sew this from the hem towards the wrist. Now repeat that on the other side.
okay so now we're going to move on to the sleeve hems if you're doing the hem version there'll be a notch at the wrist at two centimeters which is three quarters of an inch simply cover stitch that hem at two centimeters or overlock and stitch down or twitch to a needle whatever you prefer so for this version I'm going to be putting in cuffs so we're going to need the cuff so here is my cuff piece on each of two sides opposite you'll find a notch in the center we're going to fold this cuff so that that notch is at the fold and then we're going to overlock together this unnotched side and what we're going to do is put our hand inside it and then just turn the cuff back on itself so we have wrong sides together and then just rearrange your cuff so that the seams are together and that the notches are together and put that away somewhere safe and repeat for the other cuff Now if you're like me and you're pattern matching, so I've got a stripe so I've had to be a bit careful, make sure that they both look the same before you go any further. So the outside is the right side. Take your garment and place one of the cuffs into the wrist area so that we have right sides together. We're going to match the seamed part and when we overlock in we're going to gently stretch the cuff to fit and we want to make sure the notches match as well at the opposite side. So what I'm going to do is start overlocking at that notch just a couple of stitches to hold this all together so I can rearrange my work. It just works like another pair of hands for me. I'm going to take all those overlocking threads, just pull them out to let the machine cut them as I sew, and I'm going to gently stretch those three layers, making sure the raw edges are all lined up and I'm going to overlock that in a circle. Right, so I'm just going to repeat that for the other side. So now I'm moving on to the neckband. Take your neckband and place it right sides together and overlock a short seam. Now generally with my patterns this seam becomes the centre back, 
but because we want this garment to be reversible what I've done is this seam is going to go to a shoulder seam so that the seam will sit on the shoulder it doesn't matter if you wear it frontwards or backwards it will be the same as a rule of thumb we usually put any seam on the shoulder on the left hand side but it's entirely up to you depending on which way you consider to be the front so when you're ready fold this lengthways wrong sides together and then place that seam at a shoulder so it might be a bit bulky just make sure your seams face in different directions so your overlocker can handle it and then hold that in place with a pin. As we come around the neck band, you're going to find a notch. So that notch, if it matches to the back, the back has a double notch, put that right in the center. And when we sew this into place, we're going to gently stretch the band to fit. Then as we come around, the next notch will be at the other shoulder. So just place that to the other shoulder seam. Making sure that seam is going to face towards the back. And then match the next notch to the centre front or the centre back depending on the way you've pinned it. Now to make your garment look a little better, it's a good idea to not start sewing at the centre front. So I like to start either side of a shoulder seam. And just remember we're going to be gently easing this in to fit. There is stretch allowed for just to make sure that the neckline sits where it's supposed to be. And this is especially important because this is reversible. The back is going to feel quite low um, compared to normal backs. But it does make the garment a little more versatile. And now I better change my overlocking thread because I'm really on the line there. Right, and then we'll move on. So now we're going to sew the waistband onto the lower edge of the garment. Um, the main thing you need to be aware of is for this view there is no reduction so this sews directly to the bottom of the garment without having to stretch anything to fit so you need to make sure you've chosen the correct waistband all right so fold that waistband so wrong side so wrong sides are together right sides out and then we're going to come to one side of the back the cut out and that's where this waistband is going to start. So we're going to, making sure we have right sides together, place that to the bottom edge. So you want the edge of that waistband to be sitting the edge of the cutout, like so. And I'll just pop a pin to hold it into place. And remember, if you do use pins, make sure you take them off before you overlock or you will run over them and smash your needles. 
All right, so as we come along, there'll be a notch to match to the side seam. Make sure that side seam faces towards the cutout, which is the center back. As we follow the bottom line of the garment around, we come to the center front and there is a notch to match to our center front. Ah, there we are, it's very small. So match the next notch. Now if you're sewing the other view, which has um, a regular waistband, there is a reduction at the hip, so you will need to stretch to fit. So place the next notch to the next side seam and make sure that faces towards the centre back. And finally, the very edge will match to the very edge here. And now go ahead and overlock that into place. So now we're going to sew the back band into place. Um, I ran out of fabric when I was doing this, so what I've done is I've pieced two pieces together. It's not advisable. Um, I really wanted to use this fabric, so um, I had to do that. I'm sure if I didn't say anything, someone would have pointed it out to me. That's fine. So the first thing that we're going to do is sew a short hem on either edge of this. So the hem is at two centimeters, three quarters of an inch. So for me, what I'm going to do is just overlock and then plain stitch that into place. If you have a cover seamer, a cover stitcher, um, cover stitch that at two centimeters or twin needle that. Now the notch is there to show us the hem turn position, so if you want to you could press that before you stitch it down. So I'm going to turn that at the notch hem turn position and I'm going to stitch exactly through my overlocking. And I'm sewing a second line of stitching because I like the look of it. And I'm going to repeat that at the other end. Now remember if you are using a plain sewer to make sure there's a ball needle in it. The other thing to do um, is test stitch to check your tensions on spare fabric before you begin. Often the bobbin tension needs tightening. So as a rule of thumb, if the top thread looks like it's something wrong, it's generally a bobbin issue. And the other way around, if the bottom thread looks wrong, it's generally a top issue. I do have a video on my YouTube channel about tension adjustment. Okay, so go and give that piece a press and we can move on. Right, so take the ruching band and fold it so that we have wrong sides together, right sides out. And that very bottom hem is going to be right on the fold like so. Now 
as you come up there is a notch and that notch is going to match to the seam we've just sewn at the hemline. Now depending on your fabric um, this hem should face towards the um, sorry the seam should face towards the hemline my fabric because I've had a big issue trying to get a contrast fabric that would work with the stripe it's heavier weight knit than this very light French terry I'm using um, which is a brushed French terry um, so I'm actually going to push that seam up um, it's not correct really that seam needs to face towards the hemline so we do what we need to sometimes. Right, so that's that one done. Now as we come up there is another notch and that notch will match to a notch on the side like so. And then we're coming up the side of the curve and we'll just continue matching that through. Now your ruche band at the centre will have a double notch and that double notch matches to the top curved double notch there. As I said I earlier, I um, didn't have enough fabric so I had to join a piece which is certainly not ideal. But I think once this is gathered, you won't notice. And then match the next notch again. And these points are all just designed to um, help you put the correct... I'm going to say stretch, but there isn't any stretch. Just if it does stretch, it's just really to keep everything in the correct place. And then at the other hemline, same as on the other side, We want the very edge of that fold to sit on the very edge fold of our waistband like so. And then there is also that notch just above it to match to the seam line. And now go ahead and overlock that into place. You'll need to be a bit careful when you start and you finish just to get a nice um, edge here. But we'll tidy up the tail on our plain machine when we're finished. We want to do is we want the seam to sit that way so all I'm going to do and look there's various ways you can you can deal with this you could put glue there you could I don't recommend glue uh, fabric glue um, you could thread this through a needle and thread it through what I'm going to do is just roll that um, trim this back to about an inch two centimeters or so and then push the seam towards the waistband like that so that the um, the thread is enclosed so it's, it's sandwiched between this layer here and there. And then all I'm going to do is just row a cup, run a couple of stitches forwards and back. So back tack on that seam. So it's um, an eighth of an inch, three millimeters in from the edge. And I'm just going up maybe, I don't know, a centimeter, which is um, three eighths of an inch, just forwards and back. And then I'm tidying off that thread there. And not only will that help push the seam towards the centre which it's supposed to do, um, it will just
stop the end of the overlocking from unraveling. So let's do it on this side. Trim it back to two or three centimeters an inch. I'm going to do this from the right side so I can um, control where this goes. I'm just going to sandwich it in there and then um, what happens if you haven't quite met the very edge you can just adjust this to look nice by pulling it into place and then the stitching will hold it in place nicely. So here is our draw cord. Um, our garment's finished, all that remains is to sew the draw cord. Um, it's designed to fit snugly in the channel. When we sew this, we need to make sure we leave an opening for turning. Now when you do, I put notches on the pattern for it, but you'll notice um, they're on both sides, you only need to sew them on one. If you are going to leave an opening for turning, make sure you do not leave it at the centre. It has to be one side of the centre or else um, the ruching won't gather properly. So what we're going to do is fold this band right sides together. And I'm going to start by overlocking the short edge. And then I'm going to go up one of the long edges and just making sure I match the notches as I go just to stop the stretching out of place. I've just come off at the turn, um, the, hot, the opening notch, I don't know what you call it, the turning notch. So I've come off here and then there's a gap and another notch here and I'm just going to start overlooking again. We'll finish that up off with our plain sewing machine um, in a moment. The main thing is to make sure those notches match or what will happen is your um, band can twist. So now we need to turn this through that opening so that we have wrong sides together. And this can take a while, so it is stretchy which is handy, you just need to start pulling it through. Okay, so I've turned this through and I've gone to my iron and I've pressed the seam and clearly we have an area we need to um, secure. So what I've done is I've just, as I've been pressing, I pressed it so that it is all the same width. So we have six mil, quarter of an inch turned under in there. And all I'm going to do is just edge stitch. So about one eighth of an inch, um, it's probably half that actually, um, one or two millimeters just on the edge, just to make sure we secure that opening closed. And with that, our garment's actually finished. So, well done. All that remains now is to feed this cord through our channel. Right, so our garment is effectively finished. All we need to do now is to thread um, a loop turner. Oh, sorry, we need to thread the draw cord through the ruching channel, um, the ruche band. So you can either use a safety pin. Um, I'm going to use a loop turner. Sometimes this works well and sometimes it doesn't. Just try not to twist that cording, um, that draw cord too much as you go through. Sometimes loop turners are a good idea and sometimes they don't work. So I'll just help that um, into the channel. It just doesn't want to go through the beginning part. Oh, success, there we are that through. I just want to make sure that I don't twist that too much and, and I'm going to pull it through 
make sure my ends are even and I'm just going to adjust that gather so it's even on both sides And then what you can do is um, either tie that in a knot or a loop, whatever you prefer. And um, well done, your garment is finished. Hey, thanks very much for joining me with the Sew Along. I hope you enjoy this garment. Um, and I look forward to, you, to seeing you on my next Sew Along video. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you soon.